Hello everyone, welcome to Art History 101, which is the history of art starting from the earliest paintings that we know of, far within caves, and then running all the way up until the beginning of the Renaissance. My name is Cynthia Dollard and I'll be your instructor in this course. Now, most of the class you won't see me, but I thought I would take a moment to introduce myself to you and give you um, a face to go along with the voice and all of the typed messages that we'll be sharing with each other this week. Now this course is pretty easy to follow if you just do a few simple basics. I'm going to use this recording to go through those basics and then I'm going to go through a very brief history of art starting with the beginning and running until our class will end. And this will take just a few minutes. So it will be the super condensed version of the course. And I guess the first thing I'll do is introduce myself a little bit more. I am a working artist. I live about 100 miles south of Springfield in the Ozark Mountains, where I have a studio, where I am speaking from now, and a home. Um, I feel fortunate to be able to teach painting, drawing, art history, and art and experience at two different schools. And I'm very delighted to share my love of art with all of you. I support all of you budding artists, and so if you have any questions about a life in the arts, about ways that you can support your own creative ideals, feel free to contact me about that. So now let's take a moment and talk about how the course will work. Uh, you will succeed best in this course if you will check in several times a week. And every time you check into the course, I'm going to ask you to begin with our class home page. This is where I introduce each week's lesson. This is where I communicate with all of you. And it's also where I will post any um, messages that I need for you to get in a hurry. Okay, so the first thing you do, always open up to the home page. Each week on Monday, I will have a new lesson available for you to view. Now, this class, we might stay on maybe Greece for three weeks, but each week we're going to have a new lesson on Monday that will go to the following Monday. I have found that this is how um, you students will best succeed in the course and after all I'm here to support your success. So beginning with the main page or the home page check in there and read any announcements or any um, text that you have not yet read. There may be some links to movies on the home page these will also be on the lessons page, which is the second or the, the second priority of the place that I would like for you to go in the class. Each Monday, your new lesson will be posted at the top of the list of lessons, and you can open this folder to see all that's required of you for the week. Now, in addition, we'll have four outside assignments, and these will be detailed in the additional assignments folder. Now, at the moment, I'm in the process of sprucing up the course a little bit. Um, I've taught this course, it's my second semester to teach it, although I have been teaching online for over 12 years. What I want to do with the course at this point is to see how I can make it more engaging and interesting for all of you. When we're talking about people that lived so long ago, sometimes we need to explore their stories as well as simply looking at the images of their art and memorizing slides. So I'm working to bring in some other elements that will help to engage all of you to spark your own imaginations and thus enhance the course. So we have the home page, we have the lessons page, and then the discussion. Now the discussion is the life of the course really because otherwise I'm just a talking head on some remote computer and you're all alone on your computers. But once we begin to discuss, once we begin to talk about art, it all changes because each of you has a voice. Now the discussions, discussions are generally worth 10 points each. There's usually one a week, but sometimes, like this week, there's two discussion questions. They're both pretty easy and I encourage you all to stay current in the discussion area. You can read the discussion rubric, which is my requirements for the discussion grade. That's under the syllabus tab, which is another place that you'll need to really go before you do anything else, is to go to the syllabus 
tab read through and do the short quiz that will tell me that you're in class and that you've understood everything in the syllabus. Okay, home page, syllabus, lessons, discussion. Now in addition you have something called My Arts Lab and that is the, the Pearson textbook content of the course. We'll have some assignments each week within the My Arts Lab and those will be given within your lessons. This week I just like to ask you all to go in and look around, see what's available there. We will not use all of the resources available because as with much online content there's more than we can even consume during this course. So I'll keep it to a few assignments but they will be graded. So um, you'll see that in upcoming weeks. Now as I revise and upgrade the lessons then they will become visible for you under the lessons page. Okay? So after that um, there's the resources tab. Now the resources are simply links to all sorts of valuable information from online help to how to resize a photo so you can post it in the class. So I encourage you to just go there, look around, see uh, what you might need to use at a later date. So that's enough out of my little face. I'm going to move on now and I will invite you to uh, use your imaginations. Okay, so if you want to visualize your instructor as I'm typing away, you're reading something that I've written, you can visualize me like this. This is just me. But let's say mm, you want to visualize your instructor in a little different way. Well, there's a self-portrait that I did a few years back, and I'm going to share that with all of you, which might help. This is another way that you can visualize your instructor if you want to. Who is this? This is the self-portrait as an Ella human that I drew a few years back. And you can see there's a little pompous attitude here, but it's really mostly all in fun. Now another way that you could visualize your instructor is at home with my four-legged friends. I feel very fortunate to live in a beautiful area, but you know, throughout the Ozarks, throughout this region, I feel we are fortunate because it's a wonderful lifestyle. There's a lot of art. Uh, it's also a good relaxed pace in which to live. So another thing I would like to comment upon is I'm very, uh, I, I enjoy hearing from all of you. So I'd like to say that I, I like to consider myself very accessible. I usually check my emails once a day um, from OTC and I'll do my best to respond and help any of you with any uh, challenges you have in the class or if you have some ideas you want to share, I love to listen to that also. All right, so that is the overall introduction to the course. So now let's do the speed history of art. First, there it is. That's what we do is we look at a lot of art and we think about it. Now as much as we're going to look at art, um, we can only understand it through our own vantage point. All the people in this photograph, well they're going to be looking at art from their own experience and background. Now let's go back to the very beginning of time. This fascinates me. These are, this is an example of cave painting. For these paintings, the original artists went way back in caves, hundreds of feet, maybe two or three hundred feet, with their way lit only by an oil lamp. These oil lamps were made with flat stones, with pieces of moss and animal tallow. They might have several of these with them and they would burn the lamp until it burned out, light another one, walk way back into these caves and then paint or draw these masterful works of art. Uh, they used them for some purpose 20, 30,000 years ago and then they were left dark in caves, undiscovered, unknown for 20 or 30,000 years until they were discovered in the early part of the 20th century. Most of them, some are still being discovered. Okay, we're going to look at prehistoric art and then we're going to look at Egyptian art. Now Egyptian art is fascinating because it was pretty much all made in honor of death. Um, the Egyptians believed very strongly in the afterlife, especially for their leaders. Their leaders were, um, the pharaohs were sort of part human and part god. And that was okay until there was a big flood or a big plague and then the part god, you know, they got in a little trouble. So 
what happened in Egyptian art is they made these beautiful memorials and, and structures for the afterlife that have told us a lot about how they lived in this life. Now, we're going to move on to ancient Mesopotamia. I want to ask you if anyone knows where Mesopotamia is, but since I can't hear your answers, I'll tell you it's the ancient Near East, which is modern-day Iraq and Iran. So if you look at this picture, this is actually the gates of Babylon. Babylon, the mythical city um, of Babylon. And these gates are in a very unlikely place. They're in the Berlin Museum in Germany. Now they were taken during wartime in the earliest part of the 20th century, in the early part of the 20th century. Now you would think it was maybe a sad thing that they were stolen from their original home. But if you consider the history, the violent history of that region, which would be modern day Iraq, if you consider the violent history of Iraq over the past 100 years, maybe it's a good thing that they were stolen. And we're going to look at that. We're going to look at uh, art theft in wartime. Uh, and it's one of those subjects that doesn't really have an easy answer. But let's move on. Okay, so we'll talk about Greece. Ancient Greece, if you look at the image on the left, this is a very famous ancient Greek image. Now, the Greeks idealized the human form, especially the male human form, during a period in their history which we call Classical Greece, or uh, the Golden Age of Greece. Now, as all things go, the Golden Age at one point dimmed, and Greece began to struggle. The society and culture of Greece began to struggle. But their art then became more human. And the image on the right is quite painful and beautiful. It's called the Old Beggar Woman. And I like to contrast these two. Now, in addition, we'll be looking at the earlier Greek art, which is a lot more like Egyptian art. So we have the early Greek art. We have the classical high art. And then we have the what they call the Hellenistic or more dramatic art pictured on the right. Now, we're going to talk about Rome. Okay, so if you think about Rome, you probably think about the military and the Roman Empire. But do you ever think about hairstyles? I mean, this is one heck of a hairstyle. And this was uh, very popular during what they call the Flavian period. This is when the Colosseum was built. Um, and all I can say is it takes hours to do, and kind of why would you want to? But that was what the wealthy women did in that time period. So I find this amusing, and, uh, you know, it kind of speaks to all that we do for cosmetics today. It didn't start with recent times. So we're going to look at early Christian art and Byzantine art. And this was a period where life on earth in a lot of ways uh, became was quite difficult. They had the Black Plague, we had um, uh, societies, especially in Europe, tended to separate into little uh, fiefdoms, small communities rather than a larger community. And much of the art of this period is based on religion. Now this particular work is done with gold leaf, so it's basically um, painted with gold on as one of the elements. Then we're going to look at the Gothic and what they call the Romanesque period. Now during this period, a lot of the art soared to heaven in the form of architecture, where while life on earth was difficult, we could, the, the people who enjoyed this architecture, the pilgrims who traveled to view it, could always be reminded of the glory of heaven by the upward thrusting of the architecture. Now, as the, our class winds down, we're going to look at one artist. We'll look at several artists in the period of time right before the Renaissance, but this one artist really stands out. His name is Giotto, and he was a follower of St. Francis, who really turned away from the mainstream church and started his own belief system involving more human approach. Um, life is beautiful here on earth rather than waiting to heaven. And as a result, the art became more humanistic and realistic, and Giotto was a master of this. Somehow he knew how to render the human form, although no one had done this for at least 1,300 years. So we're going to finish up with that. We're going to do some wonderful creative assignments, 
a few written papers and I'm enjoying the journey already. Welcome to